Hello! Today I am introducing you to the Crock-Pot brand 3-in-1 Multi Cooker. And the reason I'm making this video is because I have purchased several multi cookers in the last year. And there's always a little something I learn after the fact, like what I wish I would have known or a function that I really, really like or something like that. So what I'd like to do is introduce you to uh, some of the current multi-cooker models that are available today that I already have. And um, we're going to start with this one. So this is a 3-in-1 multi-cooker and it is not a pressure cooker. Um, unfortunately the word multi-cooker applies to units such as this and also to some units that have pressure cookers. So there's a lot of confusion there uh, among the different brands. So in this particular crock pot, the functions are brown and saute, slow cook, bake, and then it has a keep warm function. So we'll go over all that in just a minute. Um, it's worth noting that this is a nice looking multi cooker. Uh, that's important if you're gonna be leaving it out on your counter all the time. Uh, it's it's nice if they're nice to look at. And this particular one has a brushed stainless steel finish. Uh, as far as I know, it's, it's the only finish available in this. Um, I learned about this crock pot around last fall, so I think it's only probably been out since last year, relatively new. And um, one of the other features that makes this particular cooker unique is that it has an oval shaped pot and it also has these attached handles as opposed to handles that are part of the cooking pot as in one piece. So these stay a lot cooler um, when you're cooking and they're easier to handle uh, when you need to move the pot around. So um, take a quick look at the pot. It does have a non-stick finish and uh, so far I have found this non-stick finish to be durable. Uh, I, I'm not typically a fan of nonstick finish, but that's what is mostly available on the multi cookers. And in this particular case, uh, we have definitely only used the silicone and um, wooden spoons, things like that, but we haven't had any chipping or peeling as of yet with this pot. So that's nice. And to show you this pot, It's, it's really large, oval shape. It is tapered on the sides instead of straight up and down uh, like a lot of the rectangular cookers. So it is more narrow at the bottom and wider at the top. It is a six quart capacity um, that the manufacturer's recommendation is a three quarters full so effectively it's four and a half quarts and that is standard among other slow cookers and multi cookers they often recommend that you don't fill them more than around three quarters so we're going to um i'm going to move the camera down so you can see the control panel and we'll go over the cooking functions okay here is the control panel and the uh, functions with all of their buttons and um they're just going to start from left to right. So the brown saute button, this is your uh, akin to stovetop cooking. Uh, some of the other units call it um, stovetop or uh, sear, things like that. So in this one it's brown and saute. Um, it's basically two functions, high and low. So your low is for your saute and your high is for your browning. Um, I will say that on the brown function on this one. One thing that I do like is that it, it seems to get to a higher temperature um, and in quick quicker than some of the other multi cookers and so it does a really good job for that browning. And the you do not have to program a certain amount of time for that. You can just turn it on just like you were using a pan on your on your regular stove top. Cook for as long as you want and then turn it off. But if you do want to set a timer it has a maximum of four hours for that particular function. So those are just low and high. Um, on the slow cook, this is pretty much what you're used to with the older crock pot brand cookers or any other slow cooker on the market. There's high 
and they're slow, and the maximum time setting on this unit for the slow cook functions is 20 hours. So you have a wide range of flexibility there. Um, on this function, when the slow cooking programmed time is over, it will flip automatically to keep warm. And one thing important to note on the keep warm is that there is a maximum time of four hours on keep warm. That is one of the things that I found out after I purchased the unit. So that may be important for you to know if you're going to be away and you're going to have it go from slow cook, automatically roll over to keep warm, uh, you need to factor in that that's going to be a maximum of four hours at the end of cooking. The next function is bake. And bake is, um, is unique on this unit because the temperature range that you can set starts at 150. Most of the other multi-cookers I've seen start at 250. So you do have some more range here on that. So 150 degrees goes up in increments of 25 and the maximum uh, temperature on bake is 450 degrees. So you have excellent range there. So you can either cook directly in the pot or you can use the included uh, cooking rack and put another pot on, on top of that. Like if you're going to do something in a loaf pan or um, a, a smaller baking dish or something like that. Um, also, you can use that rack to put your roasts and meats on uh, if you don't want to cook directly in the bottom of the pot. Now, one thing I'll point out about this bake, again, <laughs> I wish I had known in advance because some of the other multi-cookers when the bake function is up, they'll go warm. This one will not. So when bake is over, if you're not around to put it on auto warm or to eat it, it's, it pretty soon, then it's it's just going to sit there and start to cool off. Um, and then the, the final button is your keep warm. And that is exactly what it sounds like. It's just to keep warm. So if you do need to turn that on after bake or after you use the stove top function, you can turn that on manually. And again, it has a maximum time of four hours. So I'm going to turn these buttons on for you. There's a lot of beeping. It beeps at every button press, so it can get a little bit noisy. Um, the buttons all flash until you choose a function. And so if you choose slow cook, for example, you can see it's defaulting to high. And you can just go over here to these buttons and change it to low or back to high. And then you can pick the amount of time that you want. So let's just say we want four hours. It automatically defaults to four hours but you can you know, go up and down, like I said, to 20 hours. And then the next step is you must press start after. If you don't press start, I believe that on most all of these functions, if after a few seconds you haven't pressed uh, start, it just shuts off. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. I, I know that it's been a few times where I have forgotten to come back and press start what happened? But that's pretty much it. So your other buttons, um, you, if you want to switch functions, you have to stop and then go back and choose what you want. There are some cookers where you can just press the other function and it will jump right into it, but in this one you do have to hit stop. Choose your new function and then hit start. Um, on the cooktop, it does a preheating. That's what's flashing right there. You can't see that word preheat. So you have to wait. If you if you want to wait for it to preheat, you can. And then you have to come back and hit start after the preheat. I find all that a little fussy, but it is what it is. And if you want to bypass preheat, you can just go ahead and hit start right now. As you see, this little flashing stopped and the timer is saying, hey, this is how long I have been cooking. So that sums up the basics of the control panel here. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. I'm going to turn it off. 
and I also would like to show you the cooking rack that comes with this uh, cooker. It is a oval shape, like the bottom of the pot. Um, it is reversible in that you can have the legs down and have the rack up higher, or if you flip it over, it has some shorter legs here, and you can now your cooking surface is your cooking rack is going to be closer to the surface of the cooking pot, so that will you know cook something faster this way. So that about sums up everything that I can think of for just an intro to this pot for you to, to take a, a look at and, and get to know. Um, I will be doing a follow-up video that was going to be much more in-depth about the uh, cooker. So if you'd like to get a notification for that when it is posted, you can subscribe. I'm also going to be reviewing a couple of the other multi-cookers that I have. Again, this is just from a things I wish I knew or how it works standpoint. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching.